Salvatore's dark eyes flashed. Stop! He commanded, silencing his rude customers. Can't you see this poor fellow is so starved that he doesn't know what he's saying? As we all know, even poor people have to eat. And with that, the kind chef removed the piping hot pie from the oven and placed it carefully in a big flat white box. Here, my friend, he said, handing it to the beggar king. At least tonight you won't have to go to bed hungry. The king was overwhelmed by Salvatore's generosity. After all, everyone has to be nice to a king, but not everyone has to be nice to a beggar. Nearly giddy with anticipation, the king clutched the warm box to his chest and hurried from the shop to find a quiet corner where he could enjoy his pizza alone. Halfway down a dark alley, he was startled by the sound of tiny footsteps following close behind him. Frightened, he stopped in his tracks and spun around. Just some of my smallest subjects, he said with relief as a pair of field mice scampered across the cobblestones. But before he could reach the sunlit piazza at the end of the alley, he heard footsteps again. Who goes there? The king demanded. He peered into the whispering shadows behind him as slowly, one by one, seven heads covered with curly mops of hair appeared out of the darkness. The tallest of the children stepped forward. My name is Giancarlo, and these are my brothers and sisters, he said. We are orphans, and for a slice of pizza, we'll gladly entertain you. At first, the king clutched his pie even tighter, but the faces of the children softened his heart. He remembered the old woman in the marketplace and her generous offer to share what little she had with a hungry stranger. He thought of all the food at the palace and wondered how he could be so selfish. How many of you are there? He asked. Only seven, the smallest of the orphans shouted. <laughs> and I make eight, said the king laughing. Taking a small jeweled knife from his pocket, he divided the pie into eight equal triangles and passed one to each of the children. And so the seven orphans and the beggar king sat down to feast on the delicious pizza from Salvatore's Pizzeria. As the king inhaled the rich perfume of the pizza sauce, he closed his eyes and saw fields of ripe plum tomatoes and golden semolina wheat bowing in a soft summer breeze. He tore at the thin golden crust with his teeth and rolled the soft cheese on his tongue. With each swallow, a warm, tingling glow filled him with a satisfaction he had never known. The orphans ate slowly, savoring each bite. When they had finished, Giancarlo called them to attention. And now, he said, in honor of our gracious host, we will play the Tarantella. Tarantella? Inquired the beggar king. Oh, yes, replied the smallest of the orphans, whose name was Maria. For that is the happiest dance in all the world. On a signal from Giancarlo, the children lifted their assortment of handmade instruments, violins, drums, mandolins, and guitars, and began to play the rousing melody of the Tarantella. The music hopped and bounced. Notes soared like kites over the balconies and rooftops of the city, calling everyone to join the festive dance. The beggar king did all he could to control himself, but before he knew it, he was up and dancing. He swung his arms in the air and kicked his legs from side to side. People flocked to the piazza, joining hands and skipping to the lively beat. On and on the orphans played, and on and on the pe people danced. Before the king knew it, the day had slipped by. Soon it would be dinner time, and the queen would be wondering where he was. Sadly, he danced away from the piazza, away from the crowds of the city, and returned home to the palace. He snuck back to his chamber, removed his rags, and dressed quickly for dinner. That evening, as usual, the king sat at the head of his long banquet table, spread his napkin on his lap, and lifted his fork. One by one, the chefs paraded in with trays full of food and began to sing. Bon appetit, our lord and king. Fine food and drink is what we bring. Enough, cried the king as he dropped his fork with a heavy thud. I'm not hungry. What, what not, not hungry? hungry? Wailed the chefs 
and the knives and spoons in their apron pockets began to rattle. They were afraid the king was so displeased with their new creations that he would throw them all in prison. What? Not hungry? gulped the queen, convinced that her husband must be very ill. She called for the court physicians, who rushed to the king's side with their potions and lotions. Simply indigestion. Clearly influenza. A catastrophe of gastronomical proportion, they pronounced. No, no, said the king, brushing them away. I've never felt better. He then told the astonished court about his day as a beggar in the city and his discovery of pizza, the one food that truly satisfied his royal appetite. Pizza? 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 The chefs whispered, puzzled. Braised rabbit and cherry sauce? Perhaps. A pizza? As he recounted his adventures, the king recalled his promise to Salvatore and ordered his guards to bring the young chef to the palace. Before long, the guards returned with the frightened pizza maker and presented him to the king. Immediately, Salvatore recognized the hungry beggar who had visited his pizzeria. He rushed forward to embrace him, then remembered where he was and fell to his knees. The king rose from his throne. Tapping Salvatore on the shoulder with the royal ladle, he pronounced, I dub thee, Sir Salvatore. Knight of the Golden Crust. Then he rewarded the chef with a castle for him and his family to live in and an oven made of pure gold. In return, Salvatore taught all the king's chefs his secret recipe for pizza. Remember, he told them in confidence, the most important ingredient in any meal, whether it be a crown roast of antelope or a simple cheese and pepperoni pizza, is the love that you had when you share it. The next night, the king held a banquet in honor of Sir Salvatore. He invited all the people of the city, rich and poor alike, to come and feast on pizza at the palace. Nor did the king forget the orphans, who were his special guests. One by one, the pies popped out of Salvatore's golden oven and onto silver trays, which the chefs held high as they marched into the banquet hall singing. Make way, make way, by royal decree, our popping hot delivery. The king who frowned upon the rest now bids us all to try the best. In every shape and sort and size, behold our wondrous pizza pies. With meatballs, peppers, extra cheese, with no anchovies if you please. So raise your voices loud and clear, and join us in this royal cheer. Bon appetit, long may you eat. A thunderous roar rose from the crowd as the pizzas made their way through the hall. There were mushroom pizzas, sausage pizzas, and pepperoni pizzas. There were double-decker pizzas, pizzas stuffed with elephant meat, octopus pizzas, and the king's favorite, rainbow pizzas. There were round pizzas, square pizzas, rectangular and triangular pizzas, hot pizzas and cold pizzas, white pizzas and green pizzas. Some pizzas were no bigger than a coin, and others were so large it took 10 people just to hold one up. Everyone ate and ate until they were full. Then they waited and ate some more. When the last crust had disappeared from the tables, the orphan band struck up the tarantella and guests began to whirl. Salvatore, noticing little Maria standing outside the circle of dancers, scooped her up onto his broad shoulders and twirled around until they both collapsed on the floor, dizzy with laughter. Oh, I haven't had this much fun since I was a princess. The queen declared, beating her crown against her knee as if it were a tambourine. If only the party didn't have to end. And that was when the king had his brilliant idea. The next day, he sent a royal decree throughout the kingdom. Every Saturday night was to be pizza night at the palace. And the king, who never again lost sleep on account of his growling stomach, shared feast and fortune with his friends for the rest of his very long life.